Welcome to a tutorial video on Bitsy 8. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example called Collecting Papers. Now, in the previous video, we looked at using items. Remember, items are one of the concepts we work with in Bitsy, and unlike sprites, when we use items, they disappear. So, let's look at Collecting Papers. So, for the item, I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to create a kind of paper-like shape. Just kind of fill this in right here. And remember, every time we add a new item, it is automatically updated over here in the inventory. So this is currently item two, this is currently item two. And as I rename it, it'd be renamed over here to paper. So I'm gonna drop some various papers in the world. Okay. So remember, every time we interact with an item, it gets used. Right? Unlike sprites, which are things we interact with, items are always used. They're always used up, and they become part of our inventory. So we know that as we interact with papers, as we move around this room and interact with them, the number will increase. And as we also saw when we worked with sprites, so let's go ahead and move over to cat, we can use the dialog tool, which I have already pulled up here, to add a branching list. So we previously discussed the different types of lists we can add. So I'm gonna click on add, come down to list real quick. If we want something run in sequence and end or stop on the last thing in that line, sequence list is the best choice. If we're interested in things that move around a bunch of choices and then they circle back to the beginning, cycle list. If we want to pick one from random, shuffle list. And if we want to decide based on some condition, one thing over another, that's a branching list. So what I want though, is I want this to say, I'm a cat. Then I'm going to add dialogue, page break, add list, branching list. So it's going to say, I'm a cat. Then we're going to branch, then we're going to break, and then we're going to branch. And so this time what I want is I don't want T, I want paper. So if paper in inventory is less than how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is less than six. Go get more paper. If it is equal to six or greater than six, you got all the paper. So let's test this. Does this work the way I have told you? So I'm going to move around. First, let's navigate this twisty maze. Go talk to the cat. I'm a cat. It's what we expected to see. Notice over here within the dialog tool, we've moved from this to this. There's a little bit of highlighting here. Page break, currently page break. Branching list, go get more paper. Exactly what we expected to see. Go get more paper. We are less than six. This is true over here in the inventory. Paper is less than six. It's zero. Zero is less than six. Okay. We have used paper, we picked it up, we used it. Let's go talk to the cat again. I'm a cat, go get more paper. Okay, so this time, let's go ahead and get them all. Four, five, six. So six is not less than six. I'm a cat, you got all the paper. So in collecting the paper, we showed how items can be used. We always use items within Bitsy. By interacting with them, we use them and we increase the counter within the inventory. There is a way to change this, but at least for right now, that's what we're doing. So we're changing paper to six. We'll go ahead and stop. At the same time, through a different interaction with a sprite, we created a branching list. So a dialog, a page break, and a branch. For this particular branch, we always go to the first branch whose condition is true. So whatever criteria we've established, the condition we've established, if paper in inventory is less than six, and when we started it was, it was zero, and then it was one, and then finally it was six, which means it's not less than six. Six is not less than six, they're the same value. And we finally move over here to you got all the paper. So in creating these branching lists, we can start to, start to create interaction requirements. Part of game design, more generally, we start to talk about game mechanics. One of those is collection. 
So as you start to think about more complex projects within Bitsy, we can start to apply game design patterns we might find in other games, collecting things, interacting with things, doing things a certain number of times or in a particular order, and start to apply those in Bitsy using what we now know about items and inventory. As we add items and paint, they're added to inventory, as well as working with the branching list. So as this example points out, we can start to collect a certain number of things and then have characters, sprites, if you will, react to those numbers using a branching list within their dialogue interactions. So depending on the branch we choose, we can present different information to the player and tell them to do something or not do something. In this case, we said go get more paper, and then once we handled the papers, we had collected them all, and it said you got all the paper. Notice each time giving information to the player, we were to keep returning to the cat until we got the particular goal done. So now we've moved through enough concepts within Bitsy to start to talk about goals and game design and certain patterns we can pull from those fields and domains of study and start to apply them within what we know about Bitsy. Using avatar, the thing we move around, tiles, background, possibly walls, sprites, things we interact with, and items, things we use. Keep in mind, we always use items, but we can continue to interact with sprites. So this example, working with branching list, working with items within inventory, moving between paint, dialogue, and inventory tools as we put things in and test them, working continuously across tools as we're getting more complex topics, all within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.